Hello everybody, today I'm continuing going through Vampire the Masquerade Game Jam entries and we have arrived at Waning Crescent. I have put this one off until the right time to do it because I have heard that it is a long game. Coincidentally, today is probably not the right time to do it because I am in major amounts of pain, but at the same time, it might help me forget it, so we're gonna see. Also, that moon is absolutely beautiful, and don't think it ever looks like that, because that is large. Next item of order. The declaiming woman in the dark... Uh, Livery stands stiff-necked. Too much starch on her collar. I must allow myself the luxury of silently mocking this congregation of monsters, lest I give them the satisfaction of my fear. Florian Mare, thin-blooded, you stand at the court of Budapest undeclared, infringing on the tradition of hospitality. An absence of your sire, their breaching of progeny falls onto you also. She pauses, the stark echo of her voice tumbling back and forth against the frescoed ceiling of St. Clear Palace. She must have picked the place for the acoustics, to enhance the pomp. The Princess Mercy allows you to take the mark of the crescent moon and continue your existence under Camarilla law. All my faults laid upon me and my escape so narrow is stifling I fight against the tightness of my chest and take a breath. Um, I would love to see how the prince looks, so I'm just gonna stare at her intently. She sits on the grand upholstered chair under the soft glare of the chandelier, and the coronet of diamonds sits glimmering on her dark gathered hair. Death throws her youthful looks, and her sense of fashion. So she looks old to us effectively, but to me she looks grey. <laughs> Her white dress and pearl necklace look like relics from before the Great War. In fact, so does the oval of her face. I've seen it in school books and documentaries. I mean, pearls are pretty. I have a pearl necklace myself. A grip on my neck. The scorch forces me down, knees and heels of my hands on the floor, a thud of bone and marble. All I see of the prince now are her boots sticking out from under her dress, lined with little buttons. My cheeks burn as if slapped. You should be grateful, Thin Blood. We're benevolently allowing you a choice. Our scourge's blade and a quick end now, or the crescent moon mark, and our oversight and protection. So much for mercy. Provided that a generous member of this court cares to keep you in their domain. I shift my eyes left to right. The beautiful and the damned sitting around the room, most of them would pass for human at a glance, at least until you see their eyes. They're avid, hungry. They glitter in their finery and none of them are pretending to be anything but what they are. Dead things in fancy dress as opposed to me. Dead only in halves. They're watching me. They're a cold thing in their eyes. I am tonight's entertainment. Passing thrill to liven up the dull eternity. All strangers, except for the two of them, a Nosferatu and a Toreador, and my oh my, is the Nosferatu impressing? Um, <laughs> I know that this guy is the Toreador, but look at this. My dude, you have gotten some reptilian in you, and honestly, I'm all for it. It's. It's like you managed to get that perfect amount of alien where they're just like enough alien to like start looking really, really damn sexy, and that explains why so many people went after Garrus in Mass Effect. Mosferatu? Thomas V, my acquaintance, secret detector, handler, hideous like all of his kind. I beg to differ, sir. <laughs> I think he is majestic. Yet somehow compelling with an air of rakish confidence, his face twists into an angular shape, eyes set wide with a gleam in their depths. 
has always reminded me of an owl. So, yeah, me too, and I believe that to be absolutely beautiful. The patterned cream and brown silk in which he's wrapped tonight does nothing to dispel that impression. I, he has a good sense of taste, I agree. He stands without a single glance my way as if aware of my attention. I will take him. Whatever else they might be, a well-trained thin blood can be of use. He speaks solemnly, but with a touch of humor. He makes me sound like I'm a pet, a dog. He'll keep leashed and muzzled and teach not to piss on the rug. <laughs> I can be a good boy, mister! <laughs> and then Florian. I startle, my eyes jumping right. <laughs> Don't look at me. I return my attention to Thomas, though I strain almost all my attention elsewhere. It is William's voice. William Harley, my torridor. Well, calling him a friend is at once too little and too much. He hasn't spoken aloud, and I realize with cold horror that his voice vibrates smoothly, crystal clear in my head. Good! Now listen, say that Mr. B know of you and did not denounce you. Though he has better standing than I, discredit him and I may step in instead. My heart drums erratically. Funny how that still happens. Very well then, Florian Mayor, Prince calls. What is your answer? I look up and remember. I'm gonna go with the old uh, owl boy. I'm, I'm gonna go with the owl boy. Let me just remember the owl boy. Forever remember the owl boy. Is that a photo? I know. Almost. Mm. <laughs> God damn it, we hit the intraditional spaces again. The tree looks real? The motel sign does not. Explain that. My head strikes the alley wall and I discover I'm still human enough for my vision to white out. I blink against the pain. Do I go limp, take the beating, do I try to struggle free? The hands of the two anarchs are like vices on my biceps as they shake me. Escaping this seems unlikely now. I've known I was just taking a chance going behind their backs. I just didn't expect to be found out this quick. One of them, Lee Dirk, gives me another hard shove. Thought you could screw us, huh? Thought you could cut us out and get away with it? Must think we're stupid or something. Got anything to say for yourself before we take your head, your little abortion? Well... This little abortion has survived the to the court, meaning my choices here do not matter. Hmm. Silence is better than violence. It also irritates people a lot. I turn my head and spit blood, but don't say a damn thing. Why not swallow it? Why are you wasting a good thing, my dude? They won't believe me if I try to lie, and Lee Dirk and his crony are already going to kill me. Shows of defiance are useless, and no one's here to witness it but me. I brace for more pain. Death will probably hurt. Even when I'm already halfway there. But instead, I hear a new voice. Well, well, well. What do we have here? This isn't your domain, voice. It's mine. The new voice is warm, gravely, but pleasant. Oh, owl boy, can we just... Find a nice room with a fireplace and... Hmm... He should be surrounded by wood. With so much aesthetics, you must surround yourself with wood and books, I think. And maybe like a couple of perches, but not necessarily. Fire? Fire would definitely work. I could definitely see a nice rug going with that coat that's just like... Not one of them, like, zone rugs, but like one of them sheep's wool rugs that are just, like, fluffy on top. Yeah, that's, that's the room. I don't recognize it, but the anarchs are roughing me up must. They exchange looks before speaking in turn, ugly smiles on their faces. Stay out of this, Tamas. It doesn't concern you. We'll just handle things with this cheating little runoff and be out of your way again. Anyway, two of us, one of you, wouldn't like those odds if I was you. Oh, those are damn fighting words, Sonny, and it's a bad choice. It was a soft, sharp sound. Someone snapping their fingers. 
Now I can see a figure at the end of the alley, silhouetted against the streetlights. Tomas speaks again. Count again, boys. Whatever they see, it's enough to make the anarchs drop me. I slide down the wall and sit on the filthy pavement, feeling the back of my skull for injuries. When I look up again, they're gone, and the figure at the end of the alley is in front of me instead. To be... <laughs> to be an owl-looking Nosferatu that just has a gangs of obfuscated friends of his just like walking behind him in group and by the looks of him in style so I wondered when he snaps his fingers was there like 20 Nosferatu that just vogue? <laughs> uh. Uh. And then they just fade into obscurity again to follow around Tomas. Oh, that's such a great image. It looks down at me from a face gnarled and bird-like, eyes glimmering strangely, and he smiles. What do we have here? A stray lost and wandering. Tomas holds out a hand to help me up, his fingers end in curved claws. <laughs> Hello there. I, I am. The player is taking personal interest right now, so never mind for what the protagonist would be doing here. I reach out and accept the help. Also, is it me or claws are like really sexy? Like not, not animal claws, but like people claws. Like if you just take a people hand and you added like some good strong claws to it, mm, that's the image. Finding myself held to my feet with surprising strength for someone that skeletally thin. The skin is cool and unpleasant, and I get a whiff of something vaguely rotten as I catch my balance. He pats up my shoulders like he's trying to be comforting. The smell doesn't help with that. I can actually imagine that picture with like a vaguely rotten smell on specifically that person, and for some reason... It still doesn't register as unpleasant for me. There we go. You're right. Just a bit bruised up. Got a name for me to call you. I certainly won't be calling you what your friends did. The must be at your service. I half expect him to sweep a bow, but he just waits for an answer. Looking from side to side, I see other figures in the alley. All of them are twisted and strange as Tomas Nosferatu. I was right. They were just voguing there. I look back at my rescue variant. Florian, how did you know I needed help? The mass laughs, a hoarse croak like an owl's cry. He puts an arm over my shoulder and starts leading me away, pointing up at a camera's glassy eye. Haven't even noticed it until then. I guess that's the point. I keep an eye on things around here. Now shall we talk business? You managed to make those two very angry. How industrious of you. I could use someone with that sort of initiative. Well, this is how I begin working with him. In the court. Being... Pressed down by force. After that, I worked for Tomas for your months. What do you have for me tonight? The room is dark except for a pool of amber from an expensive Tiffany lamp spilled across the old polished wood of the desk. The mask sits half in the shadow and half in light in chiaroscuro and makes his gowned face seem even sharper. I think this is still before the court, which is like, hey, thanks asshole for not making me official. Very nice of you. I don't know, maybe the Camarilla presence wasn't there. I push the folder across the desk and Tomas takes it, flipping through to skim my notes and look at the photographs I've taken. But I know he'll want me to give him a summary too. I recite quickly. Andres Cortez, a phlebotomist at St. Rocco's Hospital. He's addicted to painkillers and have trouble getting his fix. They're locked down at the supply, probably noticed someone was skimming. Feed him what he needs, he'll get you blood bags and won't ask questions. And this is not quite the owl library I was imagining, but damn, gold. Oof. You know, if you woke up in that for the rest of your eternity, I don't, I don't think you'll be upset. You would be upset. At least I wouldn't. 
Well done! If all else fails, I can always employ the oldest leverage of all, blackmail. Centrocos isn't within my domain, but if the deals happen to take place here, well... He's placed with his loophole. He finds a lot of those. Talks about working within the system to get things done. I hardly understand the rules he plays by, let alone how to bend them. But when it comes to me, I figured out he's breaking them. The mouse leans forward. His croggy face moves from half shadow into full light like a moon waxing through its phases. What about the other task I've set you? Have you found out more about the voice? The voice of the blood, it speaks! A fringe group of radical eugenist addicts who keep running, turning up when I look into sources for blood harvesting. The mass once called them a hoop and a skip from Sabbat. Whatever that means, but I knew now they're dangerous. As it turns out, good old Liederk isn't quite a member of the voice, but he has connections to one of their cells. And I have connections to him. I'm pretty sure it's the main reason Damas keeps me around. But before I answer him, I have a question of my own about this. I'm gonna be diplomatic. It's fitting with the golden ceilings and the glittery stuff. Hmm, glitter. I do know a few things. I've been working on it like he asked. I always have to prove my worth to full bloods. Damas protects me from Lidark and his friends. He even. I. Every single time I read a non-English um, non name, especially one that somehow has like them markings that imply that I should stress that syllable in particular, I just switch over to some sort of weird Count Dracula accent and then it takes me a couple of sentences to get rid of it again. And then another name comes. He even teaches me when the mood takes him, but I sometimes wonder if that's only to make me more useful to him. Sometimes I wonder if this is all my life will ever be. You're not too shabbily dressed, he's not too shabbily dressed, you are sitting in a gold room, I don't see what's the problem. Back when you picked me up, I told you everything I knew about Lee Dirk's business and that was useful to you. But you asked me to keep going, find out more, so I have been. I'm grateful to you for everything you've done to help me, of course I am, but haven't I repaid you by now? He's nice enough for a Camarilla full blood, and I was careful with my words, but I still brace after asking that. The mass watches my movement in silence before surprising me, <laughs> giving his horse cough a laugh. You think I'm using you, is that it, Florian? I am, of course, I make no secret of that. I stare at him mouth open. That's what kindred do! We're predators! But outside of some gangrel, not usually the can kind who run in packs. The only way to have a society at all is by building a web of favors and debts. Everyone owes each other. Everyone uses each other. Use me right back, you know? A lot of same actions can mean different things depending on how you interpret it. The action hasn't changed, but your feelings associated with the action have changed, and therefore, um, how you interpret the whole of the situation has changed. And when how you interpret the whole of the situation has changed, you Either feel very sour about it and want to change it, or actually you are living your best life, and it is all about the attitude. So, everyone lives in a web of favors and debts. When everybody owes each other, nobody owes each other. And... If I do nice things for you, and you do nice things to me back... I think we're at net zero, but we know each other a bit more. And... <laughs> it's a lot nicer way than looking at it than by going, we use each other. 
They'll drop the use bit. Just go, hey, I provide you employment, I provide you a place to stay. It is nice, isn't it? Of course I do. Has no idea what my life is like, always stuck somewhere halfway between. I can walk in the sun, the beast inside me never breaks free to rampage, but I still have to drink blood to survive. I'm still not human and never can be again, and his kind hates mine. If the mass is able to offer me any protection at all, I'll do whatever I have to do to ensure he continues. I owe you everything I have, and I can never forget that, but you do a lot for me too, of course I'm using that. Oh, Florian, you're more of a vampire than you ever give yourself credit for being. It's symbiotic. I use you, you use me, we both get what we need. Now that's the statement I agree. Sym symbiosis is a wonderful process and it is how societies exist to begin with. He sounds amused more than anything. Maybe even pleased with me admitting it. You don't even sound upset about that idea, me using you. Tomas laughs again and shakes his head. Why would I be upset? Let me confirm this for you, Florian. All kindred use each other. Expect it and you'll never be disappointed. And any lake who tells you that they're not using you is lying and you have to ask yourself why and what it is they really want from you. Very well, so it's a matter of withholding what I know to prolong my usefulness or ensuring that he keeps me by providing I, I can do what he wants from me. Uh, just He's an owl boy. He's now forever my owl boy. Just give him everything. I am using him and I'll continue to do it for as long as I can, so I have to keep providing him worth his time and resources. They have originally taken me in because of Lee Dirk, but maybe if I do well enough with this, there'll be another job for me afterward. I followed one of Lee Dirk's courier carriers to a meetup and caught some of what they said. Got another name from it. Vedlieni. And I follow up on that, and that was led me to Santrokos. The voice keeps popping up whenever I look into the black market blood trade. Hmm. Names! Tomas drums his fingers on the desktop, the claws making little thunks on the wood, and then he nods once. I wish I had claws to knock on the table. Wait, I kinda, I kinda do. <laughs> it's not as satisfying as if it was my own nail. But at the same time, I can't stand actually having nails, which is another problem of mine. But like, if I had something... I hate it when it comes to typing. And I definitely hate it when it's like in everyday life, which is why my nails are like super short. But it would be nice to have something thick in front of your soft part of your finger to knock on the wood with. That you can feel and that is an extension of you, which I think counts as nails. But Lini and St. Rocco's Hospital. I will look into it. Keep at it, this Florian. Seems pleased. I relax. You probably dismiss me soon. It is interesting, though. St. Rocco's is not in Buddha. Yet you cross the Danube so very often. Or not. Stone is mild, but I can tell he's probing. His eyes have that keen glint. I should know better than to try to keep secrets from an Asperato, but I managed it before. Okay, whoever William is, you will now know about it. Osperato loves secrets. If I give Tomas a nice big one, it might help prove my usefulness. William has been nice to me, he, he's an independent. I doubt he can protect me like Tomas can. I go to Buddha because I have a friend there. He helped me out once when I was starving and I visit him some nights. He's nice enough, but a little strange. We talked for hours, but William sometimes seems so distant and uninvolved that I couldn't say how he feels about me. I don't even know why he helped me that night we met. A friend. Kindred, I presume. And what is his name? Is he Camarilla? I was right. He seems interested. His focus sharps. Yes, he's a Torridor, I think. I don't think he's with the camera, but he's not an Arab or anything. Don't worry. Autarchus is said once. I don't know what it means, but he's not connected to any of this, just someone I know. 
The moss leans forward, eyes glinting in the half-life. Half an answer, Florian. I won't try to forbid your friendship, but ask yourself who it is he answers to and why he's interested in you. The Atarkas are the unaligned. They have no allies and no protection and no rules. Be wary of a, a solitary predator. They're usually trying to hide something. All of you are solitary predators in reality. Uh, thinking again about how maddeningly composed and closed off William is, I feel a touch of disquiet. The mouse watches me for a moment and then smiles and leans back. Continue your work on the voice then. Now is there anything else tonight? I consider. There is something I need if I want to hold on to what few benefits I get from being even halfway a vampire. A taste of Tomasis Vitae so I can keep using the Bloodborne Disciplines. Which make my nights a little easier. Asking is awkward and I hate being even more indebted but I can't put it off anymore. In one way or another I need it. I mean, technically you don't need disciplines. You really, really don't. Um... Just... You can walk in the sun. You need blood, yes, but you can, you can walk in the sun and that is... It fun enough. And just nicely remove yourself from the society very, very, very slowly. Go, go somewhere nice. <laughs> like the Honolulu, I don't know. And just be like, hey, I am that immortal recluse that gets to live for forever. Happy end. Um, I'll just go direct. Awkward or not, there's no point in beating around the bush. He knows my reason, so I just come right out and ask. I need more of your blood. I'll never be as good as you at that disappearing trick, but being able to hide more effectively would be helpful for the voice job. The mask chuckles warmly, surprisingly. I wonder how long it would take you before you ask me again. Your restraint is admirable. It's easy to become addicted to Vitae. Blood leeches are pitiable wrenches, if dangerous ones. And moderation in all things, yes. When you need it, just ask me. Fetch me a cup from the sideboard, would you? Aw. You have manners and cutlery! Oh well, then again, I suppose people don't really eat blood with spoons, but that would be... quite a way to do it. I retrieved the cup and set it in front of him. I wonder why he doesn't ask me to drink right from his wrist. In fact, he never asked me to. Never try to take advantage of my potential ignorance of blood bonds. Thomas bites open his own wrist and drips Vitae thick as syrup into the cup. I can smell it and my fangs ache in my jaw. He's right that I could get hooked all too easily. He hands me the cup. Sweeter than honey, richer than wine. Oh, I'm sorry, sweeter than honey? Oh no. Not something that I would ever want to taste. Can you imagine drinking a cup of something that's sweeter than honey? You would be like, I am giving myself a blood sugar aneurysm. I am about to die in a very painful and a pleasant way. The mass vitae slides down my throat and something inside me responds to it. The blood welcoming this new infusion. I don't know what my face looks like, but the mass smiles indulgently. Do you need help feeding now? To make better use of that? I shake my head. No, I can handle it, thank you. When I leave Tomasa's lair, I descend several sets of stairs and emerge into humid tunnel. Exit through a public toilet in Kileti Station, where the green and red lines of the underground intersect. So why would cross the Danube again? Well, a thin blood learns early on that it's better not to lay all your faith at the feet of a single altar. Worship many deities at once! Be like that person from the mummy that had like 
all of the religious symbols and try to recite absolutely everything at the mummy approaching. But at least it will make for good entertainment. I sincerely despise that wallpaper. It reminds me of Strauss's wallpaper. It also reminds me of my grandparents' wallpaper. It is... It is the kind of lightly hued pattern that I associate with old. It's like this... I don't know how that's possible, because if you go further back, and if you go and visit some sort of palace, and it's like nicely engraved, or even like has medieval frescoes, you're like, oh yeah, this is pleasant to look at. And then you look at this, and the first thing that comes to your mind is old. Like, it's dated in just the right way to not be vintage, to just be dated. When I met William the first time, I was following, uh... When I met. A lead all the way to Buddha's boring residential streets. For two days and two nights I loitered there, and for two days and two nights I came up empty-handed. And hungry. So unfathomably hungry. He found me and led me to an easy, docile meal. Still waiting for the other shoe to drop for that kindness. And I didn't sit in William's living room on a frankly unimpressive sofa covered by quilt. The entirety of his apartment is forgettable except for the paintings that hang on every wall. He moves about gathering pastel oils and setting them in a box. I look at him. Always pallid, never bothering to flush his cheeks with blood, dark circles under his eyes, which make him look very ill, sleep deprived, or heavily drunk. In other words, just shy of dead. Honestly, William, I approve. I also always look shy of dead, and this camera doesn't do it justice. You have no idea how panda-eyed I look on a day-to-day basis. I'm not wearing any makeup right now, by the way. Um, I couldn't... I decided that if I'm gonna film more than one of these, then I'd rather... Um, I'd put it on in increments to make myself less boring to gaze at. I should be forthcoming with you. I startle at his sudden address. He's barely even looking my way. I'll let him talk. Expectantly, I watch him arrange the oils in the box. If I let him ramble, perhaps he'll say more. Though I was part of the Camarilla, my current situation as an independent had taught me much about navigating the waters between the Camarilla and the other factions. I believe you would know how this feels. So let us say that I listened to what a Malkavian friend of mine had to say, enough hints to learn that a certain man called Lee Dirk would really enjoy getting his hands on a thin blood called Florian. I've known this for a little while. As he speaks, a cold weight settles in my gut. Glance quickly towards the window as if my anarch pursuers were right outside the thin curtain. Well, what are you planning to do? And what will you do with your knowledge of my secrets? He leans against the table, his hands on the edge. The same that I've done thus far. Nothing. Another blessing. All his blessings are providential. So either my luck must run out or my trust. Nothing. I repeat it with the faintest note of skepticism. He catches it, and his returning smile is just as faint. Staying away from Camarilla power games and other trappings of bureaucracy if I can avoid it is good for the soul. The same goes for the various Anarch factions in a different way. I have no interest in it. William as an individual is like completely putting me down on my desk. Um, I appreciate is aesthetic because it does go very well with this character. I feel like this visual novel has done characterization really, really fine. But it's it's the kind of person that being around the air would feel stuffy. <sighs> like it's under five inch layers of dust. 
I feel like I would need to run in there and strip that wallpaper and put some fla fresh flowers on his desk and open wide the windows to let in the moonlight and go there and even with the bare walls he would still manage to make the place feel like it's in their five feet of dust. It's... It's like you just walked into the never-ending dust ball of... Ugh. I would probably paint with him. He's not Bob Ross, but... Kinda seems like the kind of dude that wouldn't put you down for your work, you know? Not the Gordon Ramsay of painting. So you play fast and loose with the rules. He shrugs, minutely. You can put it that way. Again, so does Mr. V. Um... Another thing. If you have information on somebody, there is no actual reason to disclose that information to the person's face unless you want to actively put them on their guard. There was absolutely no reason for him to give this to the thin blood if he was just being charitable. You know, another thing, this candle. It smells so nice that it actually lasts a while, but it's so small that it makes you think that it's nearly over, but it's probably not even halfway done. I stare at him, and almost human despite his looks and size. If it's any consolation to you, that one was much harder to figure out. I wet my lips, taking off my shoes, and took my feet under me as I lie against the sofa and into silence, William tilts his head as if to reframe me. Going to his cupboard, he takes out a pencil and one of his sketchbooks. The sofa winds under his weight as he sits at the other end, facing me, wielding a pencil at an angle, his wrist held just so. This is the third time he has drawn me in black and white. If he wants to keep the secrets, he can keep the secrets, Brian Frank. The pencil scratches the paper rhythmically. I can imagine myself playing piano in this room. This man fills his pages with my pace. His mold green eyes flicker up and down. That's what it is. Mold. This place doesn't just feel dusty, it feels moldy. Searching and capturing my features to transfer them to his art, but I don't know if he would give me the moldy vibes. He kinda. Moldy vibes give me close to swampy vibes, and I hate swampy vibes. I'm always filtered through the full bl blood's gaze. In this case, at the very least, it's pleasant. I only realize he has stopped breathing entirely when I see him deliberately inhale, presumably so he can speak. You look one very alive. I wondered if perhaps you weren't blushing up for appearance's sake, but I realize now it might just be how you are. With blood in my cheeks, he means they warm up slightly. I'm gonna point how different he looks. You may know that I am a duskborn, but being put under the microscope makes me feel more exposed than does the way he looks at me to draw. The details of my heart, half-cursed body are mine to keep. You, on the other hand, look very dead. That draws a chuckle out of him. When I took his hand on the fateful night of our first meeting, it was icy cold. Not little of it. The moment, too distracted by the pangs of my hunger, but it has remained consistent all through the long months of our acquaintanceship. His hands are always cold. I suppose I do, because I don't bother with the trappings of a fake life. Honey, I'm alive, and my blood circulation is absolutely awful. I'm also cold. Always. Hold the personal um, center of warmth, especially in the winter months. It will help considerably. And why not? William doesn't look pensive, well, placid, calm, and faced. It's on his face as he works on the lines of the chiaroscuro, his wrist locked in position. I'm comfortable this way. 
I can probe for more, or perhaps see if I can startle something more out of reaction from him. I tell him I can walk in the sun! I wonder if I can shake his truths a little by sharing something more astounding. Vampires always miss daylight, at least in stories. I don't have to make it sound real, only suggest it. What would you say if I told you that I can walk in the sun? Something very close to a smick that a smirk thugs at his mouth, even if he doesn't look up. Really? I would say that so can I. I blink! Now he looks up. It's a joke. Oh. His eyes remain on me, holding a rare glimmer of curiosity. Can you? Yeah? Perhaps I can let this one go. You must have wondered, after all, how I managed to survive the streets the first time we met. The sky was this close to pinking. Yeah, actually. However, this whole curse situation works for me. It has decided I don't burn in daylight. William marches an eyebrow briefly, then makes a small, fascinated sound. That is a whole reaction? Do you miss it? My probing gives him a pause, and I wet my lips in the silence. Not particularly. Oh, I miss is the lack of natural light for painting. I release a breath. Um. You know, it's not the daylight that I would miss, it is the extra hours. Um. With the sleep. If I sleep 8 to 7 hours, that means that I have 16 to 17 hours out of every single day. And in winter, there is about that amount of time of dark time, but in summer, you have maybe five hours of night time. It, it goes thin, it goes slim. Imagine if that's all you had. I mean, summer months would just really go past, fly past, but it would honestly annoy me. Is it all this easy for you? That makes him snort softly. Some things are easy, I suppose, others less so, much like during my living days back in London. Nonetheless, he must have been in this world for a while for him to feel as if he has it all figured out. Tilt my head. England, London, a long while ago. How old are you anyway? Old enough to know a not insignificant number of people owe some of them and be owed in return. Old enough that most leave me in peace. I've been told before not to use the word vampires, their kindred, their licks. And I am, whatever insult or description they choose on a given night. But I've never heard any one of them self-refer as people. William flexes his fingers elegantly. Sets the pencil down in his lap and turns the sketchbook around as he hands it to me. I take it. Our fingers touch, as always, as are cold. The sketch is not, however. It's as if the graphite has been caressing me. My skittish posture, but my eyes so keen. It sees me with uncanny beauty. When I finally leave, out in the quiet streets of humidity settles on my skin. I look up at full moon. Pale as William's face, and... Thick of blood. I look at the prince. My muscles aching from tension, my stomach heavy, I weigh in my head the two choices laid before me. The mass and William have both been kind enough to me, each in his way. They both helped me, each for his reasons. The mass is open about what he wants from me, he's using, but he, but he protects me too. William's motives are far less certain as is the value of any protection he could give. Perhaps he has some kind of feelings for me, perhaps he knows every single thing I've ever thought in his presence. But in the end, there's only one choice I can make. Um... If this was Among Us, I would say that William is sus. Because William is sus. But... I mean, he's old. Everyone that's all the sus, except for that nice man that told me uh, a lovely pathway into a 
pond filled by swans as I took my time to stand there and look through the photos of the swans that he had taken on his phone that day because I bet that he was very very lonely. That man was not sus at all and he was kinda old so um, I suppose I take that back but I mean in vampire terms. I suppose I mean in vampire terms. But in vampire terms all the vampires are sus. But Honestly, I appreciate open. I appreciate open and no secrets and not smelling like somebody has been covered in the five-fold layer of dust and doesn't have that awful wallpaper. I do kind of like Tomasa's ceiling, honestly. It's gold. I choose Tomas. Look at Tomas. And so Sian confident, thinking himself in control of the situation, he gives no hint of nerves as he stands waiting. He is in control, though. As aggravating as I sometimes find him, he deserves his peacock spread. Liam's voice breaks again into my thoughts and I suppress it too. Florian. I remain silent and do not look at him. After a moment's pause, I hear his voice one final time. Fair enough, as you wish then. Just say nothing of me speaking to you this way tonight. Turn my gaze back to the prince. I choose life, your majesty, and the crescent moon. I will accept this man as my guardian and abide by the camera as wishes in his. The careful humility of my tone makes me ashamed of myself, but this is pragmatism. The master's greatest lesson to me. I must survive, and sentiment is not what will keep me breathing. I choose to mass as his protection months ago. Tonight I just choose it officially. The mass looks at me and smiles with satisfaction. On the other side of the room, William sits silent and straight-backed. Not only knows what he's thinking, for I surely never will. Prince Anastasia inclines her head to me slightly, then turns to Tomas. Very well then, Mr. B. I, the Shadow Woman, um, declare the Thin Blood Florian Mayor as yours. So follow Mr. Koviax to the other room. The man with the trimmed beard and an air of satisfied dignity stands and smooths down his suit jacket. He gives Tomas as a nod. My pleasure, your majesty. Now come, we will have this sorted in no time. Scourge grabs me by the shoulder. She manhandles me away with surprising ease. You know... They normally put the crescent mark using sunlight. <laughs> Yeah, I see a problem. I see a problem. At least there isn't an audience here. The scourge is at my back. I can imagine her claws on my throat all too easily. Do not resist, nor try to run. I already rejected their so-called clemency, so I do not think my death would be quite as quick now. One way or another, they want me to hurt. The chamber they take me to is empty, but for a stranger in a chair. I took the chair. So mundane and commonplace that it's somehow more horrifying than a more esoteric torture device would be. The chair could be found at any tattoo joint or hell a dentist office. Except for the leather straps of wrist and ankle, of course. I look at the stranger. Is as unremarkable of the chair and of the same grayish hue. You wouldn't pass him on the street and know he's a monster. He picks up a sharp silver tool and his tone is bored when he addresses the man who is now my guardian. Where do you want it? Hand, temple, somewhere else? It has to be visible. Panic seizes me. My heartbeat quickens. Though some magic I don't understand, the crescent moon thin blood brand never fully heals. If they mark my hands, how will I play piano? It's... I mean... Dude! Dude, I am sorry, but to play the piano, you use the fingers, um... If you burned the top of your hand, it should do absolutely nothing with your ability to play the piano. If I keep my fingers here, and I try to move all my fingers around, um, the top of my hand doesn't move all that much. Um, if they go for the palm, that might be a bit more uncomfortable, but it's a bit less visible. Um, if they go any higher than that, you're once again completely fine. So, um, 
Don't understand the complaint. They're not cutting your fingers off. Refuse to beg. If they choose my hands, I will bear that loss too. The camera claims this brand is for my protection, but I know it just makes me as their property. Look at my guardian. The mouse gives a look regarding me for a long silent moment as if assessing me. The nape of the neck. I breathe out with a private relief. With quick efficiency, I am strapped into the chair face down and the... And they unfold it until I'm prone and spread eagled. I've never felt so vulnerable. <laughs> oh, 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 that's. Ah. Mm, uh, mm. Sexy torture! The pain when it comes is nothing I could have imagined. It's like bleeding silver of the sun itself. How would you know, darling? You've never. You can't be burned by, by sun. Clipped beneath my skin to burn there forever. I scream until my voice breaks, but as the sharp silver tool tears back my flesh, I discover that I'm not human enough to pass out. Another mercy denied me. The mass leads the way into a confusing labyrinth of concrete staircases and dimly lit access tunnels beneath the palace. Eventually, these passageways will connect up with the part of the underground near the major junction of Coletti Station, where he claims a rich domain. Honestly, if you found out a way to brand thin bloods without the sun, I know that this is not official lore, but uh, um, then you would find ways to make tattoos, even if they're scarification tattoos. Humans go for scarification tattoos. That just might be the Timitsi in me, I don't know. I trail behind him, hurting and uncertain. Too many questions jam my brain. What will happen with my investigation in the Voice of the Blood now? Will Tomas still have to work for me? How had the Camarilla found out about me in the first place? Someone must have told them, but who and why? Was it Tomas? What must William be thinking? He only tried to be a friend and I rejected him. I lost that friendship, I suppose. You know the question of whether or not he sold me out of the camera is a pretty dumb question. Mostly because a Nosferatu benefits from an agent that can't be completely unseen more than from an agent that is known. Um, let's just go with, hey, bro, what do you want to do with this? Nosferatu doesn't look happy, I suppose I know why. There had been reasons after all, he'd been breaking camera rules to keep me unbranded and unknown. I doubt the reasons were altruistic once, we both do what we must. We both understand survival. Out of all my possible questions, one rises to the top. Are you going to blood bomb me now? The mask laughs hoarsely and his eyes shine as if he looks back at me and can't even the half darkness. I have more important kindred than you to keep safely bonded, Florian. And now you aren't even as useful to me as you were before. I can still be useful. The mask turns away, shoulders hunched under his jacket like mantled wings. You will be. No matter. You learned a lesson tonight and can still be useful. The tunnels are cold and dank, though frequently used. Droplets of humidity run down the walls, following the dark stripes of old paths of the mildew, and their steps follow the traces of many other pairs of shoes. The waning crescent moon carved into my skin throbs and aches. I suppose it always will. There's a whole other world hidden beneath the city. One I will never even suspect it might exist before becoming half a monster and being dragged into the darkness. Only half part of this world too, but there is no uh, longer any way to escape it. I made my choices, now I have to live with them. Oh, no! The end! I don't like endings, I only like the beginnings! I wanted to know what happens. Meh. And what he will do further. Meh. But. 
I gotta say, shame about the gray models. I don't know whether you had no time to like finish or whether they didn't load properly or something along those lines, but I've really enjoyed the very distinct characteristics of William versus Tamas and the environments that go with them. Mmm, it's like both of them were just personality. <laughs> Honestly, I had a great time. If you guys would like to play the other path of the waning crescent, uh, I mean waning crescent, then <laughs> it's not we're, we're not in French bun shop. We're talking about very serious matters in here, but if I went with slightly sad tinted visual novels, kind of really sadly, it wouldn't be a happy day, and it is my holiday time, so I ain't, I ain't feeling sad today. Anyways, if you want to try going with William, games link in the description down below. Thank you all for watching, thank you wonderful creator of this video game in order for making it, for it was a highly enjoyable experience, and I will see you all in the next episode. Toodaloo!